Hello, and welcome back to my lecture series on venture capital. Today, we will take the entrepreneur's perspective and we will ask ourselves, how do those venture capitalists actually arrive at a valuation, especially for an early stage startup? And this is really important for any entrepreneur who is planning to approach venture capital for fundraising. I spoke in one of my earlier lectures uh, about the, um, the way that startups usually raise funding. And we talked about staged fundraising. So usually it starts off with a series with a seat around, goes on to series A, B, C, D. And in this case, in case of Snap, uh, it goes to series F before arriving at an IPO. So this was a very successful kind of like a picture book way of fundraising, $2.6 billion raised from venture capital and six years to IPO. Now, how do those VCs actually evaluate their investments when they sit down with entrepreneurs and have a look at their business plan? So first, market size matters for VCs. The larger, the better, obviously, but also the percentage that the entrepreneur uh, argues they will claim out of that market size. What also matters are business model and milestones. So clearly understanding the milestones that the entrepreneurs are trying to achieve with the present round raised before they may have to approach uh, the market again for a future fundraising round. It will also give the VC a clear idea on how the entrepreneur uh, understands the business that he's trying to, uh, to, to, to grow and to, to create. The team obviously matters. Who are the entrepreneurs? Do they complement themselves? Are there actual gaps in the team? And how quickly can those gaps be filled? The funding need, how much are you trying to raise? And to what extent is this a fit with the mandate of the VC? I will come back to that in a second. But the target that every VC really has when assessing individual portfolio companies are important. So number one, what will they be looking for? They are looking for an opportunity to make five to 10 times their money invested at a minimum. They will expect a very clear investment thesis and they will try to develop their um, or understand three to four risks that their involvement may help the entrepreneur to mitigate. And last, but certainly not least, is potential exit. How will the VC be able to exit from this potential startup? Can it grow to the size uh, to be IPOable? Can it be sold to a strategic? All the individual options will be carefully assessed. Most important though, to understand for entrepreneurs, there's no single type of VC. Each VC and each VC company in turn is quite different. And entrepreneurs are well advised to find the VCs that fit their funding round, their stage of development, their industry, their vertical, their regional location before approaching venture capitalists. Brad Felt, a uh, uh, founder in the Foundry Group, basically made that point here quite well. And I hear from many VCs that they say they are being approached by entrepreneurs that either are trying to raise fundraising rounds uh, in, uh, in areas that they are not investing in or that are trying to raise money for an AI startup but are approaching a VC that's purely focused on the consumer space. So important to get this right. Now, secondly, VCs will use industry data to value an early stage company. What does it mean? First, they will identify a peer group of companies to create a benchmark to measure the startup against. Secondly, they will identify appropriate metrics to evaluate the startup, to assess the startup. Those could be operational uh, metrics. Those could also be operational considerations like customer acquisition cost, headcount, total burn rate, i.e. how much money is being spent on a monthly basis. And 
operational metrics, something like monthly recurring revenue, number of users, number of customers, app downloads, active users right now. Again, you can tell already this is very much um, proprietary or very much focused on the startup, a very personal part. Finally, they will apply those metrics to value the startup. Enterprise value, which is equity value plus net debt, whereby debt is rarely to be found in startups. So enterprise value over monthly recurring revenue or enterprise value over app download. And then they will compare the startup's pitch or the startup's uh, state right now with its industry peers. Once an agreement has been reached verbally, a term sheet is usually sent by the VC to the entrepreneur. Now, what is a term sheet? Term sheets set out the parameters under which, or the conditions under which the VC will be investing in the startups. They basically form the base for negotiation. So term sheets are, I argue, a negotiation tool. They are not a contract. They're not necessarily legally binding. Venture funds will ask for preferred shares. So when you're raising as an entrepreneur your first round, you will be issuing new shares. Those shares will not be common shares. They will come with certain preferences, certain goodies attached to it, contrary to common shares. So not common stocks, but preferred stocks. Term sheets generically have two key objectives. Number one, they define very clearly how the economics are being split, i.e. for the money invested in this startup, how much in terms of equity stake, how large is the equity stake that the VC will receive. Secondly, they will also clearly define the monitoring and controlling rights that the um, that the VC will achieve. So it's all about value creation and value capturing. Now, some examples here for terms that you will clearly find in every VC's term sheet. Clearly price and price per share and evaluation, a liquidation preference, anti-dilution clause, pay to play provision, investing rights. Monitoring and control rights will define the board composition. Does the VC receive a board seat or just observer rights, some protective provisions and potentially a drag along right. I will share below the video some sources that will give you a chance to dive deeper into some of those terms. But let me give you two examples. First, liquidation preference. You will find this in every term sheet. Liquidation preference defines the net proceeds from liquidation or a sale that will first go to repay the VC before any other shareholders receive a payout. So liquidation preference defines very, very clearly upon a sale, what will the VC receive? Purely the money invested, multiples thereof, and so on. As you can see, there are different um, versions of liquidation rights and you should clearly be aware of the impact of those different versions. What you may find in a term sheet, not necessarily in all, is drag along rights. A drag along provision gives the VC the right to force the hand of other equity holders if and when he or she would like to sell the company or exit to a strategic investor. More often than not, strategic investors are not interested in minority stakes. They would like to acquire controlling stakes. VCs nevertheless rarely do have controlling stakes in startups. So they may need to incentivize or drag along the other shareholders to be able to achieve an exit. Why is that so important for VCs? As we discussed in earlier sessions, VCs invest out of closed end funds, meaning funds with a finite lifespan. Those closed end funds define that at one point, the VC will have to achieve an exit out of its successful investments. So if and when this occurs, 
the VC would like to have free hand to exit from its investments. Now, let me just remind you of the motivation or the mindset of VCs. And this quote from Peter Thiel makes it very clear. VCs look to invest in companies that have the potential to return at one point in the future, the whole fund. What does it mean? That means scalability and size of a business matter incredibly for VCs, simply because of their business model and the riskiness of their portfolio. Now, that may not matter as much for entrepreneurs who may just be looking to build a sustainable business over time, in which case bootstrapping or other funding methods where be, may be better suited for such entrepreneurs. So we circled back to the entrepreneur's perspective today and we have VC perspective and valuing and structuring of investments inside of funds still coming up in future lectures. So today we looked at uh, uh, the, uh, the mindset, we try to understand the mindset and the thinking behind the valuation that VCs may send over in their term sheets. So VCs clearly look for companies that may return potentially the whole fund due to the high risk of failure in startups. They look for term sheets and they will send term sheets and those term sheets will define both the economic and the control rights. And your first term sheet matters, but so does the relationship with your VC. Thank you. And if you liked this uh, lecture, please give it a like below and uh, follow me for future lectures so you do get a notification. Thanks very much. I'll see you soon.